All right, I'm going to talk about IP version 4 class full addresses. So in IP version 4, there are five classes. Now, not all the classes are used, but there are five. The classes are A, B, C, D, and E. Class A goes for the IP ranges where the first octet of the class A addresses or the first um, number before the dot you find it's 0 through 127. For class B you have 128 through 191. Class C is for 192 through 223. In class D, 224 through 239. And the last class, class E, goes from 240 40, all the way to 2 55. Now this is the first octet of the IP address. Now if you look at these numbers, uh, the numbers 0, 128, 192, 224, and 240 will be numbers that you'll probably see a lot more in other places. If we want to look at these numbers, um, the ranges are here. Um, in binary, it might give us a little bit more of an idea of why these numbers are chosen. So 0 in binary, when you represent it with 8 digits, is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Kind of a big surprise, 0 is 8 zeros. <clears throat> and 127 is also starts with a 0, but everything after that is a 1. So you have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. One, one. So you can see it's easy to identify class A addresses because they all start with a zero for their first bit of the, the whole entire um, 32 bits or the, the first bit of the first octet, like a binary. Um, class B addresses, the first octet, it begins with a one. And so you look at it, and the first one, 128, is just 1, 0, 0, 0, followed by a few more zeros. So this is 128. The 191 is 1, 0, followed by a bunch of 1s. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So right here, you can already start to see the pattern. Class A addresses all start with a zero. Class B addresses all start with a one zero. And class C addresses, as you might guess, start with a one one zero. And then it's followed by a bunch more zeros for the first one. So 192 is two ones followed by six zeros, and 223 is two ones followed by a zero, and then a bunch of ones. Class D is one, 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 zero, followed by zeros. And the last one, the 239, is one 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 zero one 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 one. So from this you can already kind of guess what the pattern is going to be. This right here, two ones and a zero. This is three ones and a zero. So we can probably guess the two forty is going to be four ones in a row, and that is what it is. One, two, three, four. And zeros. But this is where the pattern changes. Instead of ending with 
four ones and a zero are a bunch of ones, this actually just goes all the way to the end. So this right here is our, our numbers right there. Now class A, these ones are nice big huge networks. Um, B's are smaller and C's are the reasonable sizes for small businesses that do need a lot of servers or a few servers. D was reserved for multicast and it's not used for much else other than D, I mean other than multicast. Um, e was used for scientific numbers or scientific calculations or things, scientific use and it's never really used in, in anything I've ever seen. So what you'll see in practical use is A's, B's, and C's for IP addresses of machines. Um, and then D, well, you will see a lot for multicast for things like imaging and routing protocols. And that's about all they're used for. So now let's try to figure out how to identify what some particular number is. So we'll start with a IP address and we'll start with 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 10. So we can look at it two different ways. We can say, well, the first number right here, the first octet is a 10. Right there is 10. So we can say, okay, 10, what range is that? Well, it is in the 0 through 127 range. So it must be a class A address. We could also look at the binary and figure out what 10 is. Well, converting 10 to binary is difficult. What we can do, we can figure out, well, it's got to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And we just know that because we do, I guess. So we look at this and we say, okay, the first bit right here is a 0. And we remember, oh yeah, A's all started with a 0. So this must be a class a address. So that's how you can figure out that one. Now let's go get another IP address. Let's do 172.16.17.18. Alright, so 172. What is 172? 172 is in some range, but it's not in the 0 to 127 range, but it is in the 128 to 191 range. So 128 through 191, which happens to be the range for class B addresses. So now we know that this is a class B address. Now let's go look at another address. And we will clear this again. So let's try this one. We got 192.168.0.1. So you might see this if you have a Linksys uh, router or some other home router. They tend to use this for the gateway of the router. And this address, the 192, is part of something. It's not part of the 0 to 127. It's not part of the 128 to 191. But it is part of the 192 to 223. So 192 through 223. And if we remember, that happens to be a class C address. So this address is a class C address. And there you go. That's how you can determine the class of these addresses.